Hi everyone! In this video tutorial I'll try to explain how exactly the extension named Hover Animator is supposed to be used. In case you never heard of, Hover Animator belongs to Steroids for Elementor plugin or add-on, which is completely free and includes 20 plus different extensions. These are not new widgets, these are rather extending capabilities of the existing Elementor widgets. So this particular one is supposed to help you animate any widget inside the column upon the mouse over the column event or mouse hover event. I'm talking about the nonlinear animations that include a few animatable CSS properties such as the opacity, positions or the transforms. I've made a few examples so you can get an idea what this extension is all about. Of course, it all depends on the idea you got and your own creativity. I'm not about to go through all of the examples here, it doesn't make any sense, because once you figure out how simply everything is functioning, you'll know how to modify these examples too. As usual, you can download the training file, whose link is in the description of this video. Let's start with something very basic, after which I'll explain how everything works with absolutely positioned elements inside the column. Here's the column that houses the image widget, the heading, text editor and the button widget. You got to know that Hover Animator requires activation per column first and then per widget. Why? Because the column is supposed to be the animation trigger. So upon the column hover event, all the widgets with Hover Animator activated should start doing their job. So I'll just activate Hover Animator for this column first. Now the big question. What's supposed to happen or which new properties the widgets inside the column should gain when someone hovers the column? Let's say that I have a goal to zoom the image a little bit and then move all other widgets downwards as a consequence of the enlargements. Something like a vertical tsunami effect. First, of course, I have to activate hover animator for the image widget. This is how all the animatable CSS properties becoming available. I'm going to use the transforms, I'm going to open the transforms pop over to change the size of the image widget. And I'll scale it for 40%, uh, which is identical to 1.4 units. And if I mouse over the column, the effect takes place immediately. Okay. I might want to go the other way around and have the image 40% bigger initially instead. And in that case, I would increase scale X normal and scale Y normal from 1 to 1.4. And at the same time, scale X hover and scale Y hover should remain 1. It all depends on what you are up to. No matter what, when using hover animator, it's always a good idea to have the Elementor Navigator visible because that's how you can easily highlight widgets or select widgets in case they become invisible by setting or off the column boundaries. There's an option to rotate the image as well, but I'm not gonna use it now. No need to, maybe next time. Okay, duration is used to define the length of the animation in milliseconds. So the greater the value, the slower the performance. And I'm gonna speed it up a little bit so it's going to be 150 instead of 250. Delay is what creates the pause or the time gap prior to animation so it doesn't start right away upon the parent column hover event it'll rather wait some time before the animation takes place. Duration, delay and easing options are common for all the animatable properties. Okay now the heading widget. Let's activate the hover animator for this widget too. And then use the offset top to move it downward for like 30 pixels. Duration should remain as is. It's slightly longer than the animation of the image widget, 100 milliseconds to be precise, but that's exactly what, what creates the impression of the wave. If I use identical duration of 150 milliseconds, the, anima the animation looks a little bit flat. Okay, now I have to animate the text editor widget too. First, I have to activate the hover animator, then move the widget 20 pixels downward, which is 10 pixels less than the heading widget. In the same time, I'm going to increase duration to 300 milliseconds. These oscillations make the animation look more natural. 
If you have any plans to play around with Hover Animator, you'll figure out what I'm talking about. And finally, just a slight move of the button widget. I have to activate the Hover Animator and then move the widget only 10 pixels down, downward. And I'm going to increase duration to 350 milliseconds. Alrighty. So essentially, that's how things work in the simplest way possible, I guess. But quite often, you'll want to animate the background of the column or swap the image, just like it can be seen on the examples below. Something like that requires a few tricks that include the absolute positioning of the widgets inside the column. I'm going to show you how exactly in just a minute. You gotta know that Hover Animator affects only the widget, not the properties of the column, so the background animation is nothing but the trick. Let's see how to create the most simple image swap in the form of the slide in, slide out effect. So I'm gonna highlight the image widget first, and I'll reset all the, all the existing styles attached to this widget, including the Hover Animator transforms. I can simply do that with a right mouse click plus the reset style option from the context menu. After that, I'll open the advanced tab, expand positioning panel and make my image widget absolutely positioned. There's one important thing to remember when it comes to using the hover animator with absolutely positioned elements. And the little catch is that the, the horizontal orientation must be right-hand side, okay? The vertical orientation should be top, while both offsets are supposed to be zero. Don't touch anything here, don't try to reposition the image or adjust something, leave everything as is. From now on, Hover Animator is supposed to take care about these things. All right, as you can see, the absolutely positioned element doesn't take any space. By the default, it'll position itself to the top right corner of the parent wrapping element, which is the column. Hence, it doesn't occupy any space anymore. All the following widgets tend to realign and take the available vertical space. So at the moment, adding and the text widgets are being covered by the image. In order to compensate the loss of space previously occupied by the image widget, we have to use the column padding. The initial column padding will no longer work because of a simple reason, and which is that the padding can no longer rely on a fixed value. Why? Because the image itself adapts to the available horizontal space, which in turn changes the image height. So the padding has to be responsive too. That's why I'm going to add 60% padding to top and 5 to 10% padding to the right bottom and the left hand side of the column. It would be awesome to be able to mix and match margin and padding units in Elementor, which is perfectly fine when it comes to the CSS. I don't see the reason why not here. First, I'll duplicate the image widget. So right mouse click and then duplicate. Obviously, the second image widget now sits underneath the original one because it's absolutely positioned as well. We made a copy. And I'm gonna select it in Navigator. Now you see why using Navigator. And I'm going to replace the image with the different one from the media library. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just gonna pick one random. Okay. Uh, I'll go to the advanced tab, hover animator panel, and I'll enable the animator. By using the offset left of 100%, I'll push the second image off the column. The offset left hover value should remain zero because I want the second image to slide in on column's hover event. Alrighty, if I do some hovers now, you can see the whole point. However, the original image widget remains still because the hover animator hasn't been enabled, hasn't been activated yet. I did reset all of the styles, remember? So in order to make the first image slide out to the opposite side, I have to activate the hover animator and this time set the offset left hover value to minus 100%. I guess it's pretty much obvious that this animation has been achieved by manipulating the left offset value. Everything is pretty much straightforward. 
there's an animation to be done on a column's hover event and nothing to be done when the mouse is out because everything gets back to normal automatically. Maybe it's a good idea to mention as well that all the widgets that have been animated don't lose any of their original properties which means that you can always create a link out of the image or the heading widget. You can add the padding or the margin as you usually do, apply transformations, etc, etc, whatever you like. If you recall, I've mentioned at the beginning that it's also possible to animate the column background as well. I'm not talking about the column's background hover or the background overlay hover animations because these are pretty much useless unless you are about to animate the color blend. Okay? What I'm talking about here is quite close to what I just demonstrated with these two sliding image widgets. For instance, in case you want that slide effect takes the entire column height, all you gotta do is to modify the image widget height and make all other companion widgets sit atop of them instead of being covered by them. It's very simple indeed. I'll use the navigator to highlight the image. I'll go to its style tab and set the height to 600 pixels, which should be enough to cover the entire column. The height doesn't need to be set precisely, hence the fact that any height excess should be cut off by the column itself because the column is overflow hidden. The object fit must be set to cover in order to eliminate any scaling deformations. And I'm going to do that for both of the images. So this is basically how you can create the impression of the animated background. Maybe you can come up with something different, something else, but I guess it's all right this way. It works. How to uncover the other widgets? Well, the solution is quite obvious. I just have to assign the higher stacking order to every one of them. The stacking order refers to what is known as the Z-index in CSS, and the setting we need can be found under the Advanced tab, Advanced panel. It's gonna be alright if I assign one to every hidden widget. I don't have to change the stacking order of my two image widgets because they already have the lowest possible stacking order by the default. From now on, I could improve my animation by adding more animatable properties to widgets, and that might take some time. So I decided to rather surrender the rest to your hands as a homework. Because there's really nothing more that you should know about the hover animator. Everything is really simple. What you need is good idea and a little bit of practice. Maybe I should mention that you cannot animate the intersection, even though the intersection is the widget. But in the same time, the hover animator can be normally applied on any column of the intersection. At the end, I hope that this tutorial helps you clarify any mystery with respect to the hover animator extension. Feel free to let me know your opinion by leaving the comment below. Other than that, everyone stay well, peace and love.